Depending on what statistic you use, the vast majority of visitors to a website that click the back button never return somewhere around the range of 98% to 99%. Where are they going? You might ask. And let me tell you, they're going to your competitors that actually have a funnel, something that says, hey, you're new here. Let's start here. Let me give you this thing. Let me nurture you and provide you some value. Let me follow up, see if you have any questions, and let me continue offering you the next step in the process in order order to becoming a customer. Now, the best advice that I can offer in a short period of time when it comes to mapping out your marketing funnel is to start at the end like we did with your goals, and then reverse engineer the process. So, in other words, for someone to make a sale, well, what needs to happen before that? Maybe it's visit a sales page. Okay. Well, what needs to happen before they visit a sales page? It's like, okay, well, they need to click a link. Well, what needs to happen for them to click a link? Are they getting it through content or through email? And then if they got on your email, how are they getting on your email? And essentially, you can just work your way backwards through the process. And then once it's all mapped out, that's where things get really exciting. Yeah, kind of nerdy about this stuff. Because once it's mapped out, now you can start looking for gaps for leaks in your funnel. You can start finding areas where you're losing people through some random mistake or messaging. This just doesn't quite line up. For example, if everybody's clicking over to your sales page, but nobody's opting in or nobody's buying, well, now we know we have a conversion issue on the sales page. On the other hand, if people are joining your email list but then never opening any of your emails, well, now we know we have an issue with congruence between what was promised and what's being delivered. Or perhaps we're just collecting bad emails. Or if we map it all the way out and we get to the sales call and we realize that we're only closing 1 in 4 or 1 in 5, when we should be closing 1 in 3 or 1 in 2. Well, now we know we can start looking looking at that. And we can look at all of the steps up to it. And was there a congruence issue again? Were there pricing expectations? Were there other objections and sales issues that we could have overcome in our marketing prior? What's really cool about this is that we make a small tweak over here and we increase conversions by 2% and we increase that 1 by 3% and that 1 by 1%. Well, it's not like we're adding these things up just one after another. They compound. So an increase by 3% here could lead to 10 or 20 or 30 more sales, which could then lead to thousands or tens of thousands or even millions more dollars in revenue at the end. Speaking of revenue, next step here after our funnel is CLV, which stands for Customer Lifetime Value, sometimes referred to as LTV for Lifetime Value or LCV for Lifetime Customer Value. Whatever it is, it's pretty much all the same thing, which what is the value of a customer to your business over their lifetime period? Now, some people look at this in revenue, some people look at it in profit. I typically like to look at it in profit, but it depends on the formula that we're looking at. The point is, if you've never done this before, this is an incredibly powerful exercise to run through to figure out just how valuable someone is to your business. And I'm willing to bet, regardless of what business or market or industry you're in, it's significantly higher than you thought. Which means that you now have permission to do significantly more marketing and invest in significantly more content because you know just how profitable and how valuable new customers and new clients and new sales are for your business. So that's step one. Figure out what is your CLV. After that, you need to find ways to encourage and increase retention. The number of clients and customers that you're going to keep, the length of time that you're going to keep them, and then finding other ways to increase that customer lifetime value either by selling them more things, by selling them more things more often, by increasing the price, by providing upsells and downsells and cross-sells essentially other ways and other opportunities to solve problems that they have. That's an important point to make here. What we're doing with our marketing and with our offers is we're solving problems that they have. And when we solve a big enough problem, we're rewarded in direct proportion to the value of the problem we solve. This is why some people make a whole lot of money. It's because they solve big problems and some people struggle to make any money at all because they're just not solving enough problems for enough people. Or they're not solving big enough problems for enough people. 
Okay, so that is CLV. And what you may notice is that is kind of the final ring of our concentric. Expanding circles, right, moving all the way out. But we still have one left. And the reason that I almost didn't want to give it a ring of its own, but rather have it sort of circle the whole thing, is because especially today, especially now, and moving into the future, it's so important that it almost needs to overlap and encompass everything else that we're doing. This is going to support all of the marketing of your offer. It's going to help move you towards your goals faster than you ever thought. It's appealing to every target market. More people consume this kind of content than anything else. Basically checks the box for being able to clearly articulate miracles and miseries. It works with almost every single platform, which means we can put it in front of people and where they're present and active online. It's the best content type. We can embed it in email, it works as part of the funnel, so on and so forth. Probably no surprise here that the final piece of the puzzle is video. Essentially the big question that you want to ask yourself here is how can you supercharge everything you're doing with a video marketing strategy? Now, clearly for long form video, YouTube is the best place to do it. That said, I appreciate that if you've never done video marketing before, if you're just getting started, you're not comfortable in front of a camera, that's a pretty big ask. So we can put that on the back burner for now. And there are a lot smaller and somewhat still very effective steps that you can take leading up to do them on Instagram, you can do them on Facebook, you can do them on a number of different platforms as well, depending on subscriber counts and what rules are coming and going. But stories are a great way to sort of dip your toes into the water and get started next. If you're willing to take it that next step further and you want to capitalize on all of the available organic reach right now, short form vertical content is still going to be your best bet. These are things like Instagram Reels and TikTok and YouTube Shorts. The length of these varies. Different platforms tend to have preferences for different length videos, but typically we're looking at 15 to 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds, somewhere around that range. So what's something that you can talk about for 30 to 60 seconds? I'm willing to bet that if you've been in business for any length of time or you have any sort of passion or interest in what you're doing, there's a lot of stuff that you could share that other people would be interested in hearing about. Of course, if you really want to dominate your space, become the leader in your industry, then YouTube is clearly going to be the winner here for long-form video content. So don't be afraid to test it out. Upload a few bad videos at first. I mean, the beauty of just getting started is nobody is really around to watch your stuff, so you get a chance to sort of practice and experiment a little bit without all the judgment of the internet. Looking back on my first videos, they were awkward and incredibly sweaty and I was super nervous and I didn't know how to use a camera so it's kind of blurry and I didn't know how to use a microphone so it only came out of one side. Yeah, it was, it was rough. But the point is, is that practice does make progress and you've got to start somewhere in order to get better. All that said, there are still 7 more tactics and strategies and tricks and hacks that I didn't have a chance to get to in this video. So that's why I've linked up more resources in the description. See you in the next one.